Hey guys, welcome back to Chef Monica's Kitchen. Today we are doing a special salad that I learned when I was taking cooking classes in Morocco. So in 2002, when we traveled there the first time for my master's thesis research, I spent three days in a palace. I guess you'd call it a palace. It was a palace. It was a palace. And I um, did cooking classes with a Berber woman. For those of you who don't know, the Berbers are the indigenous population of the Atlas Mountains. Um, they've been there for thousands of years. Um, so this Berber woman, who spoke no English and no French either, um, only spoke her indigenous language um, and a little bit of Arabic. Um, and I, of course, spoke French and English, so we kind of figured things out as we went along, but I knew the spices and basically what she was Wasn't doing. Wasn't there another woman who spoke a little of both and, and Idris who was translating they were some? Kind of tra it was a mishmash, but we figured things out. Anyhow, one of the dishes she made um, was this cabbage salad, which is delicious. So I'm gonna make this cabbage salad for you. You could easily use it instead of like a coleslaw because it doesn't have mayonnaise in it. So it, it's um, a nice like warm weather. If you're trying to take something to a picnic and you don't want it to spoil quickly, this would be a really great thing to take with you. So um, we start off with, this is one head of cabbage. It was about that big. Let's see. What's head that? size. It's a, a, depends on whose head. <laughs> my head or your head? Your head. <laughs> if it's my head, it's like a small ca uh, cabbage. And if it's your head, it's like a big cabbage. <laughs> so it was uh, maybe like eight inches in diameter or so. Um, and then I have one cucumber. I peeled the cucumber and then I cut the seeds out from the inside there. I have one pint of grape tomatoes, which I quartered. Let me just scoop those up here. And then I've got green onions and garlic scapes. I don't know if you're familiar with garlic scapes, but this is the season in which they grow. They sort of taste like gar garlic, but they look like a cross between green onions and chives. So um, they have great flavor. You can find them in probably most farmer's markets. I got them from Coneflower Farm, but I know a lot of people are growing them right now. And I like them almost better than regular garlic, so highly recommend, or just use plain garlic. I got some chopped up preserved lemon skin. Again, you could use just regular lemon zest if you want to. And then a little bit of cilantro and parsley that I chopped up as well. Same as before, you can leave the parsley or the cilantro out, but I highly recommend not leaving it out for this because it really will change the flavor and then it's really not very Moroccan. So if you want to be true to form, you want to keep the cilantro in. Okay, let me just get my hands. I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick and I'll be right back. Sorry, I had to wash my hands because I was all gunked up. Okay, so now we're gonna season this up. We've got a little bit of salt. You do want to salt this pretty adequately because I want to draw the moisture out of both the uh, cucumbers and the cabbage so that it kind of wilts down. So it's probably about, for this much, I'm going to say a teaspoon and a half or so of um, salt. Fresh cracked pepper. A little bit of cumin. I'm going to say about mm, two teaspoons or so. This cumin's really bright, it almost looks like turmeric, but it says cumin. Oh, I lied, curry powder. That's okay! Did you just put the wrong <laughs> spice in there? That's all right, pretend this was cumin. It'll still taste good. <laughs> it's Somebody a curry needs to cabbage fire salad. me. Now all of a sudden it's Indian, not Moroccan, but it'll still taste delicious. In fact, it might even be better. <laughs> Who the heck knows? I swear my brain is not screwed on straight. Okay. Just gotta keep going Smoked now. Smoked paprika. <laughs> also about two teaspoons. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> Tell you what. I, I have, officially I have quarantine brain. It left about two weeks ago. A little bit of the sumac, which we've talked about a couple times. I'm only gonna do a teaspoon of that. But the sumac is that kind of uh, citrusy tasting spice. We're gonna use quite a bit of harissa paste, which is that chili paste from North Africa. Really low on that. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna use whatever's left in here. So about two teaspoons or so. Two big teaspoons, because I want to make this nice and spicy. The cabbage is sort of neutral in flavor, so this is really gonna absorb anything you put in there. Let me get all that in here. Okay. And then the dressing, quote unquote, originally would be argan oil, which if you've ever been to Morocco or have seen the commercials for the Moroccan oil in like hair care products or cosmetic products, that's called organ oil. It's a tree that grows in Morocco. Google goats and trees and you will see the organ tree. It's this kind of 
weird scraggly looking tree and the goats like to climb to the tops of the tree and eat the fruit and inside of the fruit there's this little tree nut that the Berber women collect and then they grind it up with like a mortar and pestle and they squeeze out the oils from that and that oil the first press which would be like extra virgin is used for cooking and then the subsequent presses is what they use in cosmetics it's incredibly delicious but very very expensive so if you don't want to buy it then you can use like an almond oil or a sesame oil. It'll give it a similar nuttiness or just plain olive oil. That works as well. Highly encourage you to Google goats and trees. It's really amusing. So we're gonna do two, three, four, about four tablespoons or so of all of the sesame oil. And then we're gonna use apple cider vinegar or red wine vinegar, whichever you prefer. Um, I happen to, ha happen to have the apple cider. And I'm gonna do about three tablespoons of that. So I do like this fairly acidic. And while I'm tossing this together, so um, I was gonna tell you an amusing story. So I was there for this cooking class and every day we would cook a full meal and then we would sit down and enjoy it. And um, <laughs> we thought we were gonna avoid ending up at a carpet shop because we really didn't want to deal with the whole traditional going to a Moroccan carpet shop. And sure as heck, somehow, from this cooking class, we got taken down into the basement, which was a carpet shop. And we ended up sitting there for like three or four hours. Yeah, you don't remember this? I didn't start, I thought it was up. I oh. thought it was like the second and third floors. No, we got taken to the well, basement. It was in the palace. It was this in palace the palace. This palace is huge. And they took us to the damn carpet shop. We ended up there for like three or four hours. No, we were there for two hours and we got three glasses of mint tea out of it. I don't care. And we bought how many rugs? Just one. Just the one, $200 <laughs> later, that we had not intended to spend. Oh, and the funny part of the whole story is I had this, I had my camera with me and I was taking pictures because the rugs are beautiful. They're just really expensive. Um, and you kind of feel like you're being um, a little bit, um, not harassed, that's not really the word. High pressure sale. It is a high pressure sale situation. Um, we knew we'd get out alive. It wasn't like a danger thing. Um, but I had my camera with me and then when I went to develop the film, this is in the old days when you develop film, turned out that I had black and white film in there. So none of the gorgeous pictures of the rugs came out, which is just depressing. Anyhow, so start off with a cooking glass, end up in a carpet Tell the shop. story about eating in the palace. Eating in the palace. So, um, in Morocco, they typically eat with their hands, right hand, food, left hand, alternate purposes. Use your imagination, what those alternate purposes may be. Um, so of course, we were trying to do as Moroccans do and be good tourists, and we were eating with our hands. And our tour guide, Idris, who became a good friend of ours, he sat down and they had the table elegantly um, set and everything. And of course, he picks up his fork and knife and starts eating with a fork and knife. And we're like, Idris, what are you doing? How come you're not eating with your hands? He's like, well, I'm in the palace and it's elegant and I'm going to have, enjoy the fine dining experience. So for him, it was a novelty to eat with a fork and knife. We're like, screw that, we're gonna eat with our hands. So it's just a funny difference in culture um, to experience that. Alrighty, actually that curry smells really good in here. So it's kind of a fortuitous mistake. So we're gonna let this sit and marinate in about three or four hours in the refrigerator, obviously. Um, you'll see all of this will start to sort of like melt down and all of those spices will permeate the cabbage, almost kind of like kimchi does. Um, and then it just gets more and more delicious as it sits in the refrigerator. So you can make this ahead and keep it for up to a week in the refrigerator and then just use it for various purposes. You could use it um, just as a plain salad and throw some goat cheese and maybe salmon over the top of it or shrimp. Um, or you could use it, um, uh, let the... Eh. I, gosh, just just eat it. Just take a freaking fork and eat it. Take a fork and eat it. Bye.